There's a lot of excitement about HTML5 and CSS3 in the web community today. And with the addition of the HTML5 pack for Dreamweaver CS5, you can begin using HTML5 and CSS3 in Dreamweaver today. Now here I have a page that I've designed in HTML5. Now I've turned on my live view so that you can actually see the way that this page renders in my WebKit browser that of course is built straight into Dreamweaver CS5. Of course in design view, it looks pretty much the same, but I'm gonna be using live view so that I can see the instantaneous changes to my CSS and my markup as they happen. Now, the first thing that I wanna do just to add a little pop to this page is to address the images on the right-hand side. They're all, you know, they look great, but they've all got that same rectangular shape. And, you know, we've begun to see a lot of rounded corners out there. And I know if you've tried rounded corners in the past, you know that that usually involves some JavaScript and and, you know, wow, that really is uh, a little bit higher than my pay grade. You know, I want to do this just simply with some CSS. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select the image. Even though I'm in live view, I can still select the elements on the page and see the markup that I've assigned to them in my CSS. So I'm going to go ahead and select the, the selector for that particular image, which is my images inside of my aside. So I'm going to then ask to add a rounded corner. Now, one of the great things that CSS3 adds to it for us is something called border radius. And as I begin to type, you can see that I'm drilling down into border radius. Now, you'll notice that there are several border radius entries here. Border radius, of course, being the standard W3C um, implementation of border radius, which, of course, no one respects right now. So in order to get an actual border radius, I'm going to have to do something else. I'm going to add another border radius, but this time one of the browser-specific border radius implementations. Now, since I am using a WebKit browser here, I'm going to just show you WebKit first. We'll go ahead and add that in, and I'll say give us 10 pixels of border there. And of course, for my Mozilla-based browser, whoops, let me just click into a new line here. For my Mozilla-based browsers, in other words, Firefox, I'll go ahead and add in the Moz border radius as well. And I'll just select that and add in 10 pixels. So this way I'm going to not only get the browsers that currently implement a border radius, Firefox, uh, and the WebKit browsers like Safari and Chrome. And as you can see, as I'm doing so, then we can, we've actually got our rounded corners. I'm also future-proofing my code so when additional um, the browsers begin to add border radius by the W3C standard, then I'm going to be future-proof for that as well. Okay, so it looks pretty good, but you know, still not quite happy with this. What I really like to do is sort of break out of the rectangular design, if you will. So I'm going to do another neat little addition to C CSS3. And this is called a transform. Now, as I begin to type, again, going directly to the W3C implementation of transform. But again, since I am using a WebKit browser, I'm just going to go for the WebKit transform. I'm going to ask for the WebKit transform, and it's going to show me all the possible we have. We have rotation, scaling, uh, scaling on the X and Y, skewing, um, as well as a couple of other options, uh, translations on the X and Y coordinates as well. But I'm going to use rotate here. And let's just go ahead and say rotate um, and let's say, oh, I don't know, um, five degrees. See what that looks like. As I click over, you can see that I've begun a, a five degree rotation. If I want to go the other way, of course, I can just add a negative sign. So there we've got another rotation. Hey, looking good. All right, let's address something else here on my page that I'm not quite happy about, and that being my navigation up at the top. Now, I've got a nice little mouse over happening here, but one of the problems that I've got is that black band. I really would like to see through that to the image underneath, but of course, again, transparency, um, not supported across all the browsers, and um, yeah, and again, very difficult to do because i got to use images. But I want to use just a straight CSS implementation. So again, I'm going to go and select the uh, select or a rule that I've created 
for my navigation and you can see that it is nothing more than a background color of black if i change that to white you can see that happening here just to prove in fact that yep that's it that's it's just in a, a background color not an image at all so what i'd like to do is just go ahead and take this out entirely and use a brand new type of color instead of that hexadecimal i'm going to use an rgb color now we can implement rgb in the exact same way as we do hexadecimals and you can see me adding this back in and as i do so we've got our black back but i would like to be able to see through as i said again so i'm going to add an a here in front or behind the rgb indicating alpha transparency adding another comma and putting in my transparency of 0.5 says give me a 50 percent opacity and you can now see through the black underneath my navigation now i'm really enjoying the the mouse over it looks really good but again just sort of jumping back and forth and again not really happy with it so i'm going to again go and select one of these rules and i'm going to go straight to the rule for these links within my navigation and what i'd like to do is as i move between them instead of just that that sudden jump between colors I'd like to sort of give it a, a nice easing or a fading in, which again is possible in CSS3. It's called a transition. And as I begin to type, again, we're seeing our transition properties. Now remember, again, I'm just showing you the WebKit implementations, but of course, the other browsers I would add as well. My Moz uh, transition, uh, uh, an O transition for Opera. Uh, but here, we're just going to do a transition, and I'm going to say how long would I like it to last? So I'm just going to give a transition duration of one second. Now what this is going to say is as we refresh our page and I mouse over the element, then it's going to enact this hover rule. And so it's going to look to find what is the background color originally and what is the background color we're moving to. And it's going to move between those two in one second. So you can see both it's fading in as well as fading out, even as I move back and forth. All right, final little uh, perk to my, my layout here. I've got a, a, an H1 that again not popping a whole lot and i'd like to give it a, a little bit of extra zest so let's go straight to the rule for my h1 i'm gonna scroll down just a little bit and i'm just gonna add a little pop by giving it a shadow again shadows drop shadows if you will something that we've been wanting to do a long time but has required up to now using images to achieve. So I'm gonna say, I want a text shadow. And again, I'm going to use that same RGB color space. So I'm just gonna type RGB and I'm going to give it an A because of course a shadow should have an alpha, uh, obviously. So we'll go ahead and give it a black. So we'll do again the zero, 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 but separated by commas. And then a zero point, uh, let's say point eight. So an 80% opacity on that shadow. Now with a text shadow, we have additional properties. So we've got our color. We also need our, our top and our left offset. So I'm gonna give a two pixel offset on the top and on the left. And then a spread, we'll spread this out, let's say four pixels just like that and as we click back over here you can see that i now have a beautiful drop shadow on my h1 now i hope you join me next time when we're going to find out how to turn this image into a video and an html5 video at that